Today we will be looking at this amazing 1957 Ford C900 cab model kit from AMT. This model kit was given to me by my good friend James, and I'm excited to get this to haul my IMC Big Rig Tanker Trailer. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. Or perhaps you've owned these model cars in the past and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, we feature classic plastic, domestic kits, imports, new releases, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. And now, on to our 125th scale AMT Ford C900 tractor review. The first thing I like to do in these unboxing videos is just to go over the instructions because that shows everybody what's in the kit, and it also helps if people have lost their instruction sheet and then discover this video. First up we have this excellent 36 piece engine assembly. So here is our surge tanks, and those are two parts. We also have a two-part air cleaner, a carburetor, the intake manifold, the intake flange, the air horn, the heat riser, the governor, our distributor, our starter motor, and then we have our oil filter bracket and the oil filter. So I'll just move this down a little bit. You see the bottom part of the engine. And here we have our two-piece engine block. We also have the galley cover two-piece transmission, oil pan, front cover, air compressor pulley, alternator, our accessory belts and pulleys, the fan, the power steering pump, and then we have an air, our air compressor down here. And then this part you build up twice, once for right-hand side and left-hand side. We have two oil breather caps, uh, two valve covers, two cylinder heads, and two exhaust manifolds. Step two shows our wheel assemblies going together. The front has a single set of tires and the back has dualies. So here we have our two front wheel outer flanges, our two front wheels, and the two front tires. Down below we have our two tires, the two rear wheel outer flanges, the two rear wheel spiders, two rear brake drums, two rear inner flanges, and then our tire in the back. Panel three shows our interior. So here we have our dashboard, our steering column bracket, the steering wheel, the steering column, two front seats, the shift lever which glues up on the bottom of the dashboard, our brake pedals down here, and then our heater. And if I just slide this up a bit, there's our interior tub at the bottom. Panel four shows our body construction with the two fender wells left and right. And then we have two cab frames, two cab hinges, the tilt mount spring, the assembled interior, our air intake, which glues on the bottom here. And then as we move this up a bit, we also have the clear window in front and then our cab down below, the rear cab frame and a cab release handle. Panel five shows our cab going together and there are some optional parts here. So just keep that in mind as you're building this that you can build the cab any way you like. So starting in step one, we have our air conditioner grill here going into the air conditioner unit. Now this is optional. Here we have the five roof lights for step three. One, two, three, four, five. And then number four is our two air horns, one on each side. And then number five, we have our two mirror braces left and right, of course. And then a connecting brace, the upper brace, the two mirrors and the two mirror brackets. Then we've got our two headlights, the clear parts going into the headlight bezels, which go into these holes here. And then we've got our two side lights gluing in place, as well as the two spotlight lenses and the two spotlights. And it says the location and position of the spotlights is optional. Panel six shows our basic chassis assembly. Here we've got our cab support and the release handles the rear cross member, and then we have to assemble the frame. So I'll just move this up so we can see what's going on. So you have the right side frame rail, the front engine mount, the front cross member, the middle brackets here, and the brace back here. And then moving this up again, we have the left frame rail and the transmission mount. So you want to make this all into a box up here for a nice, perfect frame. 
Here we have step seven, and this is where everything happens. So here's our frame that we built in the previous step. And you'll notice there's all these little location holes that they're calling out. Those correlate with certain things like where the springs go and the front suspension and all of that. So in no particular order here, uh, well, we have our two-piece air tanks glued together and put in on the frame underneath here. We have our taillights, which will go onto the back and the tail lights, which are red, the fifth wheel, the fifth wheel mounts. We also have splash guards here. Then we have our rear springs, the two-piece rear axle, our drive shaft, which will hook up to the back of our engine. We also have air brake chambers and two rear backing plates, metal axles. There's our rear wheels going on. Here we've got our fuel tanks. You're making up four of these, so you got the two ends, the two sides, the caps themselves, and the brackets to mount them. There's our muffler and tailpipe assembly. So you've got two of those, one per side. The shock absorbers, the front springs, the wheels going on to the wheel backs. There is a brake chamber on here. You do have a plastic axle that you don't add any glue to. Just slip it through, put a little glue on the end once it's through, and then put the wheel on. There's your tie rods, your front axle, the front springs, and that's a little hook end to hook on the uh, steering column so that when you turn the wheel, this swings and moves your tie rod on the real truck. This is all solid, of course. There's a two-piece battery, the steering linkage, Got another shock absorber going on in here, and these will all say, like here, to location F, it looks like. So you'd find this, there's a the steering box. Location F, you would put this pin into there, and so on for all these other components. There's the front bumper with a license plate being glued in place. You got a two-piece radiator, the radiator hose, and then your completed engine from that step will drop in place in here. Panel 8 shows our taillights for our truck. And you also get all these little red lights and everything. These might have gone onto the box originally. I'm not too sure, but for the cab build, you just need the two taillights here. Step nine shows our cab to chassis installment. So here you've got your completed cab and it goes into these little holes on the frame. And there is also a two piece battery box that you glue together and stick in here. <laughs> Now let's look at our plastic components in more detail. So what we have here is our cab. And I just wanted to mention that you can't actually buy this kit in the way that I have it here. This one was part of the US postal system, which looks like this. Now the reason why I have the cab portion of this kit is because my friend James gave it to me. And I guess he was using the uh, trailer for something else, but this is the actual tractor. So now let's look this thing over. So what we have here is a nice f emblem on the side. I've seen a couple of these where they actually are a different color in the front, going right around here like a two-tone. Now this has the Ford Crest in the middle, which you will also find on, uh, I think the 56 Ford The big Ford letters across here. There are some little nicely molded in metal plates just under the windshield wipers, which I believe are covers so you can get at the windshield wiper motors. I'm not familiar with these big rigs in the real world. However, this does look nice. There is the door handle up there. Everything is molded as one piece. You get the nice detail in the back here, just like the real truck. Now there are some triangular or angled seam lines which run up here and into the roof and whatnot. You'll have to sand those out. There are also some mold release marks here in the wheel well, which will need to be cleaned up and along the bottom. That's where it would have been hooked up to the parts tree. Not too many uh, mold marks or anything, just a bunch up in the roof. Again, your number 16 hobby blade should be able to remove them. But overall, I mean, this looks really good. If you've built this, let us know down in the comment section below what colors you painted it. This parts tree includes our engine components, and as you can see, they are quite nicely done. Uh, the detail level is simplistic, but nice. At least it's on there. Then you got your transmissions there and your engine sides and the galley cover. 
as well as the cylinder heads and the oil pan and all the stuff that goes up front and our radiator back here. So just take a look at how nicely this is all done. Again, like I said, that transmission does look quite simple, but again, I'm, I'm not sure. This is like my first big rig, so I don't really know how much more detail needed to be in that transmission, or if that's actually how they look. If you know or had this truck before in real life, let me know in the comments section down below. Again, there's some nice details on the components. There's our two-piece radiator, front and back, the fan shroud included. And then we've got our exhaust system here, and that's that air conditioner cover. Flipping this over, we do see some mold marks, so you will have to remove those. Uh, maybe not. This is the engine, so most of those would be covered once you glued it all together. But again, overall, this looks like it's going to be fun to build. Now here we have some of the body components, as well as our valve covers here, actually. There's all our mirrors and the air horns and the air expansion tanks. And then we also have our fuel tanks here, and these are the ends. Now somewhere, of course, there's going to be another one of these caps. We'll have to find it a little later on here. This looks like the uh, headlights, or sorry, those cab-mounted roof lights. And then here we have our front bumper. Now, as we bring this up to the camera again, you can see it is quite smooth. One thing that's interesting about this model is there's no chrome. I do believe this parts tree should be chrome-plated, though. That would explain the separate valve covers and all the mirrors and the tanks. But I guess I'm going to have to either paint these a color, or, uh, I don't know, try to see if I can find some chrome paint or something. If you had one of those Molotow pens, that could be a cool way to get things together here. Oh, and there is something else. I'm bringing the cab back into the shot here. So there's our front bumper and how it would look on there which looks really nice. It's got a good fit. I was going to say that in 1957, Ford made the cab with the single headlights, and then from 1958 to 1960, they had quad headlights. Now, after that, they removed them and went back to the single headlights all the way up until they stopped producing the truck in 1990. So this one went from 57 to 90. And what I was thinking is, a lot of the hot rod and custom car models that I've reviewed on this channel have optional dual headlights. You might be able to actually find those and glue them over top if you wanted to make a 58 version. 58 to 60. Next up we have our wheel assembly and the missing part of that fuel tank. So that's always good. So here's our big rear wheels and then the front wheels. Now this was the only flash I actually found on the kit was in between the front wheels. There's our fifth wheel for hooking up all your trailers and hopefully this will work on my IHC milk tanker trailer because that's really how I want to build this kit. There's our carburetor and some of the engine components. And again, as you look at this, it looks really nice. Look at the detail in the wheels. That's probably the best point on this model. And uh, you can see just how deep the back wheels are. Same with the back wheel rings. That again is to hold on those tires. Fifth wheel underneath looks really cool, just like the real thing. And uh, there we also have just a little bit of flash in that ring. But again, overall, all these parts look, well, rather simplistic for detail. But again, they should do the job quite nicely. This parts tree includes our suspension components as well as frame components. So there we've got that great big rear differential for the heavy duty rear end, as well as the dual springs in here. There's our front springs and front axle and that air intake down there, as well as our tie rods and many of the other components. Now here again, the detail is quite nice, but very smooth. So take a look at all that bolt pattern and everything. That's really cool. There's also the little pins for the uh, steer or the wheels in the front. Those are your axle pins. So make sure you don't actually glue them into the wheel backs. Again, the springs are quite nice. The frame looks great. Or sorry, the front axle looks great, not the frame. And there's also these hooks here, which are really kind of cool that hang off the side of the truck. Again, on the back, nice and detailed. 
Mold marks are really down to a dull roar on here. I've seen some of them where they're actually like, oh, like here, where they really stand up off of the part, which of course will have to be sanded flat to glue properly to the Trek frame. And then you've got those nice bits of the frame for the front of the cab. Again, overall, really excellent work and simplistic. Looks like a fun build for sure. Now this parts tree includes our inner wheel aprons, as well as the drive shaft here. And then we've got our wheels as well. Now those are those backing brake plates. There's our dashboard and our two seats, which seem really, really tiny for such a huge cab and everything. And then here's our interior. So let's just take this up to the camera again. Look on that dashboard. You've got all those nice gauges and the knobs in there, the radio, the whole deal. And the seats are really smooth and simple. I guess that's the way they would be. Now I'll turn this over here and you can see the interior. Now our seats would glue somewhere on here, but they didn't really give any location holes. So you might need to just try to eyeball it from side to side, maybe measure in, you know, a certain amount and that's where your seat edge is going to be. Uh, now they do have some holes down there for where the pedals are. This is a little bracket for mounting the heater. And then we've got your floorboards in there. And up on the side there is detail in that door panel, although it is very light. And what I've seen in these is that it seems like all of this is steel and there isn't any upholstery on the door sides. Now I could be wrong, if you had one of these trucks and it did have upholstery, let me know. But it does seem like it's just painted metal. But uh, overall, again, really nice. And if this was your model, let us know how you would paint it. And what li livery would you have on it? Now our next parts tree is really long, and that's because it includes those frame rails there, as well as these wonderful Ford splash aprons into the back. So again, really excellent detail on here, even though it is quite simplistic. There's all those holes in the frame here, if I just move this back that had all those little location numbers in the whole deal. So make a note of them on the instruction sheet and where they go. So now I'll just turn this around. You can see the big Ford ovals here on the back of those aprons. Again, there's a nice steering wheel. And yeah, look at the frame in there. Quite cool, just like the real thing. You can see all the bolts on there. And now turning this over, there's our wheel backs. Then we have these little tiny rectangles, which are the license plates. And then there's all the rails on the inners, as well as some of the wires and cables that you would find. Uh, maybe fuel lines and whatnot. So again, really excellent work. There are some mold marks in the four corners of these parts. So fill them, or you can even just sand the backs of this down until they go away. And uh, always make sure to sand it and make it a lot smoother because you could have some deep sanding scratches. Here we have our transparent parts for our Ford C900 cab. And as you can see, you get a lot of red parts in here. Excellent for trailers and even emergency vehicles and the whole thing. But in this model, we are only using these two rear tail lights. So I'll just push this off to the side and we'll take a look at it in a minute. But for now, if I just move this in the center, what we have here is our glass. This is the front window, the side windows, and the rear window, as well as the little signal lights here, and our front two headlights. So if I bring this up to the camera, you can see that it's just a nice, easy dome on here. If you wanted to replace this dome with flat sheets of clear plastic from Evergreen Styrene, you probably could very easily, and maybe even reduce some of the glass in here. Now here's our front headlights and they have that nice texture pattern in here. So make sure that you glue this in going north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle like this. So just take your time and be careful with it. Overall, it looks really good. A couple little mold marks up in the corners here that you could easily scrape out and a little attaching point, which you'll have to remove. Now let's take a look at those transparent red parts again. And there you've got really nice detail in here. Look at all the little bits. You could use these on your trailers or whatever else you have in mind. Again, really excellent stuff and a lot of extra. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have the trailer that this thing is hauling, but I can only imagine that all these little tiny side dot lights are markers for that trailer. 
Here I have the tires for the kit, and James was really nice to include all the tires, even the ones for the missing trailer. So these are Firestone tires, which are nice. And uh, you'd have two for the front of the cab, and then one, two on the right-hand side in the back, three, four in the back. And then these would be for the trailer. So again, it would be a dual tire setup on that trailer. And he also gave me the metal axles that are in this kit. And there is one little thing I want to say about metal axles. So there is a gigantic wire somewhere in the AMT factory. And what happens is there's a machine that would measure this to length and then drop a blade and cut them off on the ends. And then this would all be dropped into your model kit, ready to go. The one thing about this is there is a burr on the ends of the metal axles. And that's from that blade coming down and chopping it. So if you've got a metal axle kit and you go and try to push this straight into a wheel, you're pushing that burr down the hole of the wheel. And because it's all rough, it uh, really can score the inside of that hole in the wheel. And you can also get your wheels on crooked and a bunch of other problems. So what you want to do is you want to take a metal file and just file the end as you turn this and make it more like a sort of like a rounded ball or even like a little point, almost like sharpening a pencil. And not, not that uh, pointed though, you know what I mean? A dull curve. And by doing that, you get rid of the burr. And then when you push this into that plastic wheel, it'll go in nice and straight and guide it all the way down the hole without the burr being an issue. So that's what I want to say about those. I might make a video showing you how they do that in the future. So I'll just remove these tires and just show you the one. Now these have that web in the center. So you're going to have to take your hobby blade and carefully cut out the web so that this will go through the actual wheel. There's a nice Firestone lettering right across there. And it's got that pie crust edge on there again. And then it also has some more details about the tire here, you know, which would be what would be on the real tire. And then there you've got your tread as well on there, which is a nice tread. And I do believe these tires have been in all the AMT kits, the uh, big rigs going all the way back to the first ones. Again, really nice. The tire is quite solid in this one. So a little bit of warm water will make it pliable to add on to the wheels without actually breaking the wheels. So anyway, here we go. Let's put this back. And that is our look at our Firestone wheels. Good news, everybody. In last week's video of the IMC Big Rig Tanker Trailer, I mentioned that I was actually missing one of the rear wheels. Well, James, my good friend, good buddy, 10-4 good buddy, he actually had one of the wheels, the wheel backs, and the wheel inserts in his collection, as well as two extra tires. So now I can actually finish that big rig tanker trailer without having to look for the wheels on the internet or anything else. So isn't that good news? Well, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Ford C900 cab that I got from my good friend James, and it should be the perfect vehicle to haul my big rig tanker trailer from last week. And again, you can even see it right there, a nice Ford C-Series cab. So if you built this model in the past, let us know. And I wanna know if you actually did convert it to a 58 to 60 dual or quad headlight job, which would be really, really cool to see. So until next time, everybody, Remember to keep the rubber on the road and happy model building!